Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be talking about the rise and fall of Jason Blundell. There's a man named Mr. Fahrenheit that has been sending me his videos non-stop. You need to stop, man. I'm going to react to the dang video. So many people do this with me. I'm like, bro, just chill. Relax. We're going to get to it. Uh, so, boys, that's what we're doing today. This man also made a rise and fall of Jimmy Zielinski. But I want to watch the Jason Blundell first because, listen... I love my boy Jason Mundell. He's a G. So you know what? Let's get into this, son. Let's get into this. Jason to to B. Jason, we're going to talk about. He was an ex a senior executive producer at Cherok Studios. Yes. In Santa he was. Monica, For a very long time. He has worked on various Treyarch Call of Duty yes. titles. He primarily worked on the campaign mode. Also, Treyarch. fun fact, Jason Mundell supposedly worked on the old Spider-Man movie games with Tobey Maguire. This man has been at Treyarch for a long, long time until he obviously left. ...games as well as zombies on the side. He has worked on the campaign in the games such as Call of Duty, World at War, yeah. Call of Duty... He's, he's, he's an OG, Cosmos, that's World what I'm telling you. World at War? If you're interested to know about Jimmy Zelensky, he was, from who the, was the lead then. creative director for the zombies mode before Jason had taken over. The link will be in the description. You can find it on my channel. And now back to Jason. Jason directed Call of Duty Black Ops 3 as the game director for the campaign mode yeah. and as the game director for the zombies mode after Jimmy. Now, I feel like with Black Ops 3, this man was like, bro, I got to pull up my pants, bro. <laughs> Zelensky's gone. And he's like, boy, I'm coming in. We're putting in gobble gums, weapon kits, you name it. It's in there. To give a little bit of information about Jimmy, he was the animator and former creative director of the Nazi Zombies Motor Trek. He was a member of the original team behind Nazi Zombies World War, yeah. and he was responsible for the zombie experience in Black Ops 1 and in Black Ops 2, where he started to have some disgruntled <laughs> business decisions with Treyarch and Activision. I love that. Disgruntled business decisions. Let's just say... Transit and Die Rise were two maps that were responsible for the downfall of someone's career. I'm not saying names. But hey, we love everyone. Or after his releases in the beginning, while he was doing Transit, Die Rise, and Buried, Jason and his team were off traveling to San Francisco. And don't get me wrong, Zelensky killed it. Like, the Victus maps are so iconic, people want Zombies Chronicles too. And that's why, like, I even tagged him. And I said, Jimmy Zelensky, bro, I want to remake Die Rise. Tell me how to do this. And he's like, boy, I got you. So nothing but respect for Zelensky and Wondell. Obviously, no hate towards both of them. Francisco visiting the Alcatraz pr Alcatraz. Prison, <laughs> Only love. Three of Only love. One of the most unique zombies maps the community had ever seen, which was Mob of the Dead. And after yeah. the success that Jimmy had experienced and the community had loved the map, Jimmy was eventually replaced by Jason, who took over. I wish they both would have stayed. I really do wish they both would have stayed. I wish, honestly, like, they kept this back and forth dynamic, in, like, within the maps. I think that would have been really cool, because that's honestly what Black Ops 4 ended up being, a back and forth of Chaos and Ether, right? But that would have been cool if it was just a back and forth of Blundell's work and Zelensky's work, like in Black Ops 2. That's why people love it, man. I'm Cobra's telling you. Role. And eventually in 2014, Jimmy Zelensky had left Cherok Studios as a yep. whole. Now, a lot of credit has to go to Jason, where a lot of people felt My like boy, he saved Zelensky Zombies mode itself for Black Ops 2, as there was an identity crisis going on. That and I don't lie, I actually think Blundell did need it. It's the same thing with Zombies. We always like having something fresh every couple of years, and honestly, new minds are great. So... It is what it is, and that's why I'm so excited for COD 2024. Kevin Drew, I can't wait to see a rise of Kevin Drew, but no fall, because my boy doesn't fall. <laughs> that can be argued with how you look at Die Rise, Transit, and Buried, yeah. where Buried was a lot more innovative and a lot more f loved by the community compared to the previous two releases. And then you had Jason come in, who released Mob of the Dead, when he taking over as his first project, being mob of the dead which is still considered maybe to a lot of people the greatest zombies, zombies map, map of all time of and then he time. follows it up yeah. with origins which was the finale to bo2 and the community yeah. loved that map so much there were even memes with there being the fog <laughs> and the giant robots i uh, yeah actually bo2 is the most memed game of all time and i think that it's just because everything about bo2 is so iconic the panzer the thousand foot giants you know the the denizens the avogadro the ray gun in the box and all that the perma perks like oh, everybody remembers these things it's so great but the fans still love this map to this day yeah and people still argue if this is the best map that was ever created in zombies now jason remained the game director for the zombies mode for black ops 3 and he worked 
worked on the Black Ops 3 campaign as well. And he had apparently in the interview with Mr. Raffal was he had planned the entire Black Ops 3 storyline back before Origins so even released. Had it planned out since the start of the game? I would say I had it planned out just before Origins. Yeah, and I, uh, listen, I remember going to Chronicles and this man telling me he knew exactly what he was going to do with BO3 and BO4 and everything. So, like, they, the level of planning and predisposition these guys had on the Zombies team originally was just so incredible. And, like, I know a lot of people were upset because the, a lot of the Zombies directors aren't really as open as Bundell now. But I think, again, the secrecy part is always something that Zombies will have and that can go towards its detriment or down. Or, oh, or Jason benefit, also you know? being left with a big task, which is the Fallout Black Ops 2 with Black Ops 3. And on November 5th, 2015, Shadows of Evil dropped with the Giant as a pre-order DLC. But you see, Shadows of Evil was, I want to say it was welcomed in the beginning, but a lot of people but it was wasn't. Too complicated. But it really wasn't. Honestly, yeah, Jason Modell really went extra with Shadows of Evil. But now when we look back, Shadows of Evil was one of the greatest things they have ever made. And to think that this map is still having its world record beaten in 2023 when it was made in 2015 is absurd. But eventually it really grew to be one of Jason's best creations. Another one to his perfection collection. Exactly. No rhyme intended. Perfection and the was there collection. For casual for real. players that really weren't into the really hardcore. So much to do. It wasn't for everybody, but it's such a great map. Jason single-handedly created the peak of zombies with the amazing gobblegum system. And I, listen, I agree. I think Blundell made the peak of gameplay. And I always say that Zelinsky made the peak of iconic things that people love about zombies. Like the pack-a-punch. The ray gun, the mystery box. Like, this man was the OG for it all, man. So it's like, Black Ops 3 was like the blending and the marriage of the two, as well as Black Ops 2, which is why I think it was just so well received. We're going to system added things like Perkaholic, Raindrops, which created so much exactly. replayability for the map where yeah the orton just going to build this and that where you could now just start it off with all all the perks you could get a pack of punch change the whole flow you don't of the have game to worry about myth busting mondays kone pizza would not be alive oh, without Goblin max ammo you can you have a i wouldn't be max either ammo which is huge you have in plain sight which is like a zombie blood for all the maps and other things it's that so help. cool jason and these amazing maps allowed the community to thrive Yes. Where you had like things like the Z House and Easter eggs oh, like Charity man. E for C. Jason also created me, a connection. Make, make me cry right now. With the zombies <laughs> production and the zombie community, which with meetups and events like inviting Mr. Rafalvis to <laughs> see the Gorod Crow. I love this. This is always so funny. I, my webcam's in the way. Just look at Milo, bro. <laughs> so I love trailer. it. So I'm not going to go over all the Black Ops 3 maps releases as a whole. But I will cover how the community views them. Dryzen Jack is true. argued to be the best map out of every the YouTuber's Black favorite map. Um, you, every which YouTuber's was great favorite DLC map. One is the money huge was for insane. <laughs> because if you have a shit launch, like you had like Die Rise, which was Black Ops 2, so that was tough. Hey, hey, hey you, what are you talking smack about Die Rise? We're about to kill it over here, okay? You come out with a DLC 1 banger that Dryzen Jack was. Hey, we're going to reveal that was, banger. Was okay? Eating it up. Eating, Jason had the community in the palm of his hands. He had him by the balls, really. But then Zed's. <laughs> and it was a really rough what launch. I think it was solved in under a day, if I remember the Easter egg. It was very glitchy, a lot of death barriers, a lot of glitches. Yeah, Zetsubo was a really bad time for Treyarch. And Jason Mundell always was telling us that, like how he had to fully change the entire system that was streamlining the textures into the zombies maps. Like, crazy. And honestly, like, just look at this map. Look at what's on your screen right now. Look how much foliage this is. And for 2016, this is insane, man. Just, but apparently they reworked the entire map which is what it took to have the map working now. And it's, it's a, it's it is. definitely underrated. And then yeah, you it's definitely Gorod underrated. Pro Zetsubo is always underrated and overhated. And GK! Which, in the my goal. opinion, is a top five map of all That's time. That's what I'm it's saying. It's a great map. Goal. Brought back many classes goal. like the Philosophy PSH. Has the Mark, the, the boy. Reagan Mark III. Has uh, the crossbows in it. And then yep. we'll move on to Revelations, which, now people shit on Revelations for being boring. There's only two new rooms. But I remember when everybody asked for that. Everybody <laughs> True, that's what I always everybody say. Everybody wanted all the maps exactly. to Everyone was like, that'd be such a cool idea. And when we got it, they were like, I think it's just because there was so much hype around the Great War idea. And then like we later realized that Black Ops 4 was meant to hype up the Great war and then it never released and then so we looked back at revelations and we're like well 
was this really the best DLC that Black Ops 3 could have ended on? Or could we have actually gotten a Great War Origins 2.0 type of map? Which, in my opinion, I mean, you look at this screenshot here, and you can kind of just see the Great War. You can kind of see it from this Origins part. And, like, listen, I love Revelation still. I still think it's a great map. However, I won't lie, the Great War it still just hurts that much not having. Like, ew, gross. Like, sometimes you just can't please anybody. So exactly. the ending of exactly. Revelation left people on kind of a cliffhanger of, well, the cycle yeah. just got redone again, so where are we going to go next? So it was kind of like a man, well, let's see what they do with the next <laughs> I was like, and man. then some rumors started brewing about, like, oh, DLC 5, DLC 5, blah, blah, blah. We're going to get new There's no way that would happen, right? And, well, I'll, yeah, everyone has to admit, Jason did have that trick up his sleeve that he did have DLC planned. And honestly, I I always think that Zombies Chronicles, like, the initial release of it was just so absurd that, like, it was, like, too good to be real, in my opinion. That's how I always think about it. But it ended up being real. It was so awesome. Jason though. arrived at a YouTuber's house who was JC. That's the lot. He just hit 100,000 subscribers at the time. <laughs> Look at that. And, and it's his future co-worker, too. Because on May 4th, 2017 jason blew everyone away arriving at jc backfire this is so cool man i remember seeing this video for the first time apartment what a moment announcement for what a moment with Chronicles. the boys um you know and it's you know it's so hard sometimes oh. dude jc is so young in this clip. Oh my 16, 2017 and it was the highest selling call of duty dlc of all ever time. ever and they decided and they not to make a second one. Outsell zombies. Could Only you imagine? when you let it. If it yeah. has no comp. Exactly. This one is spitting. Petition. Spittin'. Multiplayer always win. Give it the chance. Multiplayer can't keep up. So if zombies was a roller coaster with Jason, we had just gotten to the top and we're about to go on the fall. Where we're going to go exactly. into BO4. Where <laughs> we're going to. <laughs> the way he said that. We're going to go into BO4. Like, it was like a sigh coming out while he was saying that. I'm literally dying. On November 16th, after <laughs> the immense success with Black Ops 2 Zombies, Blundell became That's the co-studio so head of Treyarch Studios, alongside Dan Bunting and Mark Gordon. Call of Duty Black Ops 4, after the campaign mode was cancelled, which Jason would have also worked on, this allowed Jason to focus Sash. his creative mind on co-creating the zombie storyline for the Ether and the Chaos story. This is where the, the <laughs> this is where it doesn't go too good now. That headline Do4. Although Chaos was his baby, he was going to create this new story with his great mind. As Activision forced him to keep the original crew forcing the Chaos and Ether maps to mix together in the game, and that did not work. As you'll see, I have a video posted that explains why Chaos did not work in Black Ops 4. In the Ether story. I still like Chaos. I just think that, like, we needed more maps to build it out. Because I think BO4 was supposed to be fully Chaos. It was not supposed to be, like, something where it was half Ether and half Chaos. Which is why, honestly, this game needed a year two. Like, I know we needed a year two for Cold War, but Black Ops 4 needed the year two. The story was really here for the Great War map that never happened. Yes. So allowing Black Ops 4 to really be filler. Shout out Alpha Omega. They just killed our killed the ether crew off but why i still think the ending would have remained the same as still like the thing with game of thrones like that ending would have still remained the same it's just how we got there was not as satisfying i did black ops 4 fail well mostly because jason had already probably created the biggest mistake of his career as the as a creative director of zombies as he removed juggernaut he reworked zombies this is the thing and i always say this like one of the biggest downfalls and like i always say black ops 3 copy and pasted could have done well and i believe that and i probably wouldn't have been good on uh blundell's creative integrity and i also agree with that as well however there goes to say something where if you remove the iconicism out of the mode like it, iconic things like jug the perk machines the staple for perks right Whereas Cold War took the iconicism and then built on top of that, that's what people like. That's what BO3 was, right? And so when we came from BO3 to BO4, it was almost like the entire game mode swapped in a way. It was like so many things just like completely changed. Like this became a mode about becoming the most powerful zombies player to what type of strategy am I going to load in when I play each map? As we knew it, he made the zombies much faster. He made an entire new system from Black 
from Black Ops 3, and this one failed. Also, BO4 was way harder and was not finished with blue screen issues and a broken elixir system exactly. that was just inflated to make you think you were earning more when you- Yeah, and just the elixir system, that I just think was Activision. That was nothing to do with Blundell, like, I mean, it's the same thing with Gobblegums. We were just lucky at the time, in my opinion, that Gobblegums could be a uh, reset if you close up and all you need for custom zombies is to have one of each gobble gum and you have infinite. Like we had a good man. It, it was so wild to see that even in the next game, we would, oh, a lot of people only use classics in BO4. A lot of people never even touch the megas because a lot of them were like, what's the point? And I agree, man. We weren't, had a talisman system that nobody used. The perks. Talismans too. Were like, 30, the 30 perks or something. There's probably 10 perks that nobody uses or even knows what they are. If you show them the icon, they cannot identify them. Quick revive was. <laughs> what a roast, bro. Was reworked as solo players already were given three self revives. Double tap was removed and speed color was turned into a sort of a perma perk where you had to have all four perks and you needed to pack a punch the weapon. And it also just sucked because none of this was told to the player. We, I even went to Treyarch and I was like, well, where's speed cola? Where's double tap? Where's this, where's that? And you know, like, I think this is where the game mode fundamentally changed. Like it was fundamentally changed at this very point. And like, I love the mythical uh, inclusion of Greek and all that stuff, like all the mythologies. It's just removing the basis of the mode was just so gut wrenching, especially like when we get Cold War after and it just nails all the game mechanics perfectly in a lot of aspects. So. Four times to achieve the full power of the weapon. Jason worked mainly on the Voyage of Despair launch and it's considered a bottom tier map and a lot of people do not enjoy it as they felt disappointed with how I think Voyage has some of the best side easter eggs to be honest looking back but yeah like playing the map is not fun and it's definitely in my opinion the worst on disc map of all time I think without a doubt which is sad but I think it is the way it is how a titanic map had almost no emotion and had a very bad layout and just like Jimmy all it takes is a very bad launch of a game to where it really puts you on the hot true, seat. True, no. that is so true. What a great point. I mean, exactly what he says, like transit on disc. That was considered the worst zombies map of all time back then. And that was like, okay, time to go. Then Voyage's Spare drops. And it's like, well, what's going on now? The BO4's right? failure is more like an avalanche where Dead of the Night's launch, which received the least amount of advertising of any Tarek map, I have ever been around for as the launch was a massive disappointment and Jason's seat were starting to catch fire as the trailer for chaos had the least views out of any zombies trailer to this day ironically almost like Jimmy Jason did go out they had to release it after the launch of the map and I love Dead of the Night and I think this map honestly deserved way better and a lot of people speculate that this map should have been the on disc map honestly if Dead of the Night was the on disc map and if we got Voyage as DLC 1 I think people would have actually been way happier. But again, I don't think they were able to get all the like celebrities in on time and stuff. So like, just sucks, man. Sucks. Because I, I like when you look at the chronology, like the chronology of the entire story, Death of the Night is first. So it doesn't make sense to release Voyage and then be like, hey, let's go back and do Death of the Night. You know, like and Jason Bundell's launch maps, like Shadows of Evil. Right, is always those like one-off maps. Like Shadows of Evil is a very one-off map compared to all the DLC with uh, the premise crew, right? And so that's I feel like what BO4 was going to do at Dead of the Night, this really offbeat map, and then go into the DLC of Chaos, which I think would have been really fun. Uh, on a high note, where Jimmy went out on a buried release uh, following the release of DLC 2 H and Evil. Yeah, that is the other thing. I mean, like Zelensky got off on buried and. Uh, like not to say that Tog is bad because I love Call of the Dead, but like it is true. Like at that point, the difference in community sentiment was just astronomically different. Well, which is a very underrated map in my opinion. I think a lot of people don't appreciate it as much because it is on the BO4 system. Jason would step down from his creative leading role sometime around April. We don't have an actual date, and then on. February 28th, 2020, Treyarch announced that Jason Blundell was leaving the studio. Jason, what a sad day. February 28th, two days after my birthday. Oh, sad. Had this to say. After 13 fantastic action 13 years, years I have been moving from Treyarch there. during my time at That's the what studio. I'm saying. This I've been privileged been to work there. on a variety of projects, wearing many hats along the way, with my time on the zombie scene proving to be 
quite special. On June 10th, 2021, Blundell and Dave Anthony announced a new studio, Deviation, Deviation Games. Games. And this would be a zombie project to our understanding at the time. And yes, he sir. eventually would hire fellow zombies YouTuber JC Backfire. <laughs> I love this image. <laughs> social media manager. And then shockingly, <laughs> not too long ago, September 8th, 2022, it was announced that Jason Blundell had left True. Deviation Games yes, entire. Blundell no reason was left. provided for Blundell's departure. It would also yeah. announce that Deviation had partnered with Sony to create a PlayStation exclusive game. So you might be asking, yes. well, why did he leave Deviation Games? Where could he be going next? Well, there are heavy rumors that Jason Blundell is going to have a WWE style return to Treyarch after ah, Vanguard's failure. To be honest, I have to disagree hard with this. I don't think Blundell is going to come back. And I think a lot of us have talked about this in previous videos about like, honestly, a lot of VO4's downfall for what people think it was Jason Blundell, a lot of it is also Activision. And we don't know all the behind the, the scenes decisions that they had to do that like Blundell had to listen to. And I can honestly imagine like that must've been extremely frustrating to put up with. And I think for him to go back would be ludicrous. It just wouldn't make sense. This man would have to be offered like a bajillion dollars to be sent back to Treyarch. And even then, I just don't know if it would even be worth it. Like, would he still feel like the creative juices and the integrity? And maybe I don't revive know. zombies once again. As I just, we I can't agree with that. Video. <laughs> we might have to make another video. The rise and fall and resurgence of Jason Blundell. Rise and fall and then rise again of Jason Blundell. <laughs> can come back and bring zombies back to life. Literally. After the depths that we are in. As again, I think that it's fine that we move on from Jimmy Zelensky and Blundell. Like I said, Kevin Drew's going to be the next person up. And I think what he's done with Cold War has been a great indicator of what people like. And so that's why I'm saying in COD 2024, one of the worst parts about Cold War for me was the map variety. And so with this next map, I have a feeling we're going to get some absolutely banger ideas in terms of all the totally different themes and feelings of all the zombies maps. And so again, with all the development, I'm excited to see what they're going to do. And honestly, I, I have faith in Treyarch just because, listen, I trust Kevin Drew. Cold War was fun. And so if he can do that again... And that's all we got to worry about. Zombies for real. community begs to be brought back to another peak yeah. in zombies. But if you did enjoy this and found some and I new love, like you did. The one thing I have to say is that Kevin Drew is one of the most like disclosing people ever. This man will tell Twitter everything. And he wants to make the community included. And that is something that's completely polarly opposite from both Blundell and Zelensky. And that's what makes me so excited. I didn't know man. any of this information before. Yeah. Please leave Great like video. Me subscribe also, I would like to thank let me know also if you guys would like me to watch the Jimmy Zelensky one. I'll Who's Esper for him. editing this video? I'll leave his channel in the Luz description. Esper, Go like and sub to him too. If you like his editing style, he does edits. And yeah. he does zombies content well, ladies as well. and gentlemen. Thank you all. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Fahrenheit. I reacted to your video. It's all right. I reacted to it now. It's all good. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what's about to happen. Deviation Games, Treyarch, I'm playing both. So ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you again so much. And I'll see y'all. And that next one, baby.